from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. Good evening to you. I'm Mark Mullins. Tonight at 11, why a 20-year-old healthcare worker is encouraging her peers to get the vaccine when they can, even if they're not high risk. A local doctor shares a grim but important holiday message, and the COVID relief bill remains in limo, limbo. But first, the forecast for you tonight. Rain and strong winds are moving through central Indiana, and a big cool down is moving in. Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory joins us now with your forecast. And Mark, it is happening right now. Let's take you to Marion County, just west of downtown Indy. See that little five mile wide band of rain? It's heavy rain. It will also have some 40 mile per hour wind gusts associated with this, followed up by additional rain and the cooler air sweeping in on a west wind at that point in the western portion of the state. Temperatures lower 40s already in Terre Haute, 34 in Champaign, 45 in Lafayette. The Colder air is going to win out quickly. Now keep in mind, rain followed by temperatures dropping into the 20s will lead to some slick spots in the morning, untreated roads. You can see one o'clock mixing with and changing to some snow showers on the very back edge. That will pull away. Then we'll be left with temperatures in the 20s and falling through the day, even colder on Christmas day, a high of 20. We'll talk about how cold it will be Christmas morning coming up. New at 11, we are sharing a call to action from a Fountain Square resident. WRTV's Cameron Riddle shows you why neighbors are concerned empty properties could lead to danger. In Indy's Fountain Square neighborhood, there is a problem. Our neighborhood has a fair number of abandoned homes, some of them in a state of disarray. Some have a little bit of work done, some have none. Sarah Owens lives a block away from this house near Prospect and St. Peter Street. She says the home being empty isn't the problem. It's the random people who have often been seen coming in and out of the house. In addition to the unwelcomed guests, multiple fires have popped up in the last few months, including three in the last seven days in this house and another empty house in the same block. The night that this house was on fire, we could see the flames shooting several feet up in the air and it was very windy. So very scary to think that could jump. If you look at the house the next street over where that garage and home burned, the house next to them, the sidings melted. At minimum, the fires have been an inconvenience, knocking out power and internet service. But Owens knows it just takes one incident to create tragedy. That's why she's always assumed that after multiple police and fire runs, the problems would be solved. But to Tonight, she's calling on her neighbors to band together and ask the city to knock these houses down as an avenue to a permanent solution that could end the fire's mischief and concern. I think definitely this is something that we can approach together because I think everybody's on the same page. We want, we want our neighborhood to be nice. If it's a homeless issue, we want those folks to be taken care of in a different way. And then these houses knocked down and made safe so that kids aren't playing in them where someone could get injured or there's not a fire that's going to damage some other homeowner's property. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Well, in situations like this, it is always best to call the Mayor's Action Center to keep a documented list of issues and concerns, even if police and fire departments are responding to the area. Owens hopes more of her neighbors will help keep track of issues and will keep checking to see if the city takes action. Tonight, we're seeing the moment Moderna vaccines left a facility in Bloomington. The company, Catalent, shared this video from earlier this week with us. Catalent is producing Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. Vice President Mike Pence visited the facility last week. Moderna's vaccine has been shipped to hospitals in central Indiana. Frontline healthcare workers will receive the doses. One of those frontline workers is a college student who explained to WRTV's Cornelius Hawker why other young people should also choose to get vaccinated. Fran Hudson happily shows off the Band-Aid covering where she got Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. We had just received the first doses of the COVID vaccine and they said they had extra. I immediately was like, yes, like sign me up. I want to get this vaccine as soon as possible. Since the vaccine has mostly been available to frontline healthcare workers so far, not many 20 year olds have received it. But the Butler Pharmacy student works in a hospital during breaks, putting her on the list. Fran tells me that experience and other personal reasons are why she was so eager to get vaccinated. 
I worked in the hospital all summer long and I saw the impact it had on my community, on the people who were coming to the hospital who were very sick. My mom has an autoimmune disease in her lungs. It was very important that I stayed healthy as long as I was living here with her. When she's not living with mom, she's living with three roommates. The three people I was living with were also on the same page in terms of keeping our circles very small and trying to stay as healthy as we can throughout the semester. Her message to other young people is simple. Get the vaccine when you can and make smart decisions next semester. I know that like we are young and we are, you know, very much probably going to survive COVID if we got COVID, but just be thinking about other people. Spring break plans are definitely canceled this spring. Absolutely, yeah. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. The state health department says vaccines should be available to the general public, including college age student by the summer. U.S. Surgeon General and former Indiana Health Commissioner Jerome Adams returned to the Hoosier State today and encouraged people of all backgrounds to get the COVID vaccine. Speaking at Eskenazi Health, Dr. Adams said many steps were taken to make sure the vaccine is safe for everyone. I want people to know that Tony Fauci and I fought to have diverse representation in these trials, so we feel confident they will work in not just whites, but in blacks, in Hispanics, in Native Americans, and in other populations. I want people to know the Independent Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices and the FDA's Verb Pack Committee had people of color reviewing these vaccines. Dr. Adams received a COVID vaccine on live TV last week. Health officials continue to celebrate the vaccine while reminding us that it's crucial to continue following COVID safety guidelines. That includes during the holidays. IU Health Methodist Hospital shared a message from a local doctor tonight. I'm excited this year and that fortunately I was given some time off for the holidays. Um, there is the underlying disappointment in that that time won't be spent with our extended family this year. Um, and what I try and hang on to is that this is not going to be the norm. But I wanted to wish everybody incredibly happy holidays, but also continue to urge people to, f to follow the recommended precautions, uh, the social distancing, the masks, the hand washing, um, because the last place that you want to spend January this year is in the hospital. 3,123 COVID patients are hospitalized across Indiana, according to the state health department. December is set to surpass April as the deadliest month in the U.S. since the start of the pandemic. It's still unclear at this hour if or when Americans will get relief from another pandemic stimulus bill. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has still not commented publicly more than 24 hours after President Trump released a video on Twitter criticizing the bill. We told you last night at 11, the president said he wants the bill to include $2,000 in direct payments to Americans in place of the $600 payment included in the bill. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris answered questions about the unexpected standoff today. I know that Democrats certainly wanted to get more relief than the $600. And, um, you know, people are hurting right now. They're hurting. And we need to get the relief to them immediately. And the one thing you should not be doing is after the work went into the bill, holding up when by the end of the month, people are going to, their benefits are going to end. The bill would extend unemployment benefits and eviction protections, which are set to expire in just days. And the deal is tied to a larger spending bill to fund the federal government. So in addition to delaying relief for individuals and businesses, if President Trump does not sign the bill, the government could shut down on December 28th. Meanwhile, the president is in Florida tonight. He left the White House today and arrived at Mar-a-Lago this evening. This comes after another round of high-profile pardons. President Trump announced 26 new pardons tonight, including his son-in-law's father, Charles Kushner, as well as longtime ally Roger Stone and former campaign chairman Paul Manafort. A heads up if you're waiting on packages or deliveries to make it to their destinations in time for Christmas. The Postal Service says an unprecedented amount of mail combined with employee shortages due to the pandemic are leading to delays. Aggie Atkins thought that she was giving her items plenty of time to ship when she dropped off gifts for her family at the Nora Post Office on December 10th. But they're still in transit. Atkins says she's especially disappointed because, like many other people, she won't be seeing relatives in person this holiday season because of COVID precautions. And she paid extra for priority shipping. You know, there's no way you can't really get a refund from the post office. You can't get your packages back and you have no idea where they might be. And especially this year, um, I couldn't travel to be out there because of 
everything and everybody was just kind of hoping to have a little Christmas cheer. A spokesperson for the post office declined an interview and would not answer any specific questions, but some USPS officials in other parts of the country have given interviews saying employees are working hard to get packages delivered. As the stuff comes in, we're working through it as efficiently as possible. We're allocating uh, our resources. We're, people are working uh, longer hours over time to make sure that we do get all of the mail put out. Shipping giants like Amazon, UPS, and FedEx often pass packages on to the Postal Service to handle the so-called final mile of the process and actually deliver to the customer. Unlike private companies, USPS delivers to every address in the United States. It's about just showing the world we're still alive just because we have this insane time to stay at home. We're alive. Coming up, why Americans all around the country say spreading Christmas cheer is more important than ever. Is there home court advantage with no fans in the stands? The Pacers find out tonight. I'm Brad Brown at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The season opener against the Knicks. Highlights coming up here on the News at 11. Hello, I'm Colonel Rex Robertson, assigned to Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa. I'd like to wish all my friends and family back in Galveston, Indiana, a happy holidays and God bless. Your galleries live life comfortably. From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. People across the country are brightening up this dark year, making connections as well through dazzling light displays. Scripps reporter Kai Beach brings us Christmas cheer from coast to coast. I just want to spread the joy and spread the cheer of Christmas. Tis the season to light up the night. Downtown Denver, people in this high rise are letting their Christmas spirit shine by decorating their balconies. At least we can line it up and make someone look up and smile. Out west in Southern California, this Orange County neighborhood is celebrating the holidays by covering their houses and stringing lights across the street. But well, we see kids and family coming here like every night. Across the country in New Jersey, we're not letting COVID dampen our holiday cheer. The holiday spirit glows as people cover their houses with festive decor. And in San Antonio, Texas, we're not going to let COVID ruin our Christmas spirit. There's a battle to see who's the biggest and brightest. These are some of the competitive Christmas lighting celebrations happening during this holiday season. It's the light beaming from all of us. Kim Dozier of Denver, Colorado, says this competition is about bringing some much needed light to what's been a dark 2020 for some. It's about just showing the world we're still alive just because we have this insane time to stay at home. We're alive and we're going to have fun no matter what. From the Mile High City to the California coast, spreading holiday cheer has been a bit more challenging during the COVID crisis. This year, unlike other years, um, it's harder to kind of feel that Christmas spirit. Neighbors Matt Iyer and Bruce Barfill are looking to help people temporarily escape the pandemic through these dazzling displays. No Barfield is looking to capture his neighborhood's Christmas lighting competition for the 10th year in a row. He says, whether win or lose, naughty or nice, it's good to see a little Christmas magic. You know, we just do it for the enjoyment that we get and also for what, you know, people else tells us when we're outside, how they much appreciate this. Spreading Christmas cheer through some friendly competition. Competitive Christmas lights is just another way to shine the love around everywhere. Continuing holiday traditions by letting the Christmas spirit shine. I mean, we've been held down for so many crazy reasons for so long. So Christmas just lets it down, like let it shine. I'm Kai Beach reporting. Tonight in central Indiana, neighbors gave the gift of music to their fellow neighbors. People in the Claremont Heights neighborhood in Brownsburg went car caroling this evening. They cranked up the music and handed out candy canes. Organizers specifically put on the event to bring joy to older neighbors. That includes Jean Brower, who just celebrated her 91st birthday. She shared her secret to a long and happy life. Hard work won't kill anybody. I'm proof of that. <laughs> it's just boring. It's boring. 
when you're used to working and you're not working, it's boring. <laughs> Miss Jean says she worked at the Eagle Creek Golf Course for 30 years. She's not working there now because of COVID precautions. She was holding a pan of cookies for her neighbors when we caught up with her. She says that she's grateful for tonight's fun event, but she was disappointed in the weather. <laughs> you hear that, Kevin? The weather. I'm right with you, Jean. <laughs> I'm right with you, Gene. I think a lot of people work. I love her energy. Yeah, isn't that great? Hard work. She likes to see that. Yeah. Speaking of the weather here, you know, just a few minutes at the start of this newscast, it was uh, coming down pretty heavy on the roof of the studios here. Yeah, the studio there is like a gymnasium. It's got a high roof so you can hear that wind as well. But here's a little carol for you. It's wonderful weather for a forecast together with you. All right, 52 in Muncie, but not for long. That colder air is starting to take over from west to east, and that little burst of rain is heavy. It doesn't last too long, and then some other showers settle in back behind it. Temperature in Indy's down to 48. Just cross the state line. Look in Illinois. 26 in Peoria, 13 in Des Moines. 9 degrees, blizzard conditions, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds in Minneapolis. They'll have 30 to 40 below wind chills in the morning. Wow. That's the area of low pressure creating the strong winds up in Wisconsin. For us, the cold front cutting through now we will have some brief gusts 30 to 40. There's your rain. You've got the leading edge cutting through Bloomington, about ready to go through Nashville, Bedford. All of this will continue to the east, followed by some general rain, which may change over to a little snow shower activity or light snow as the cold air catches the back edge of this. Uh, Geist, Fishers, Carmel, uh, Noblesville, east side of Indy, headed toward uh, Fortville, McCordsville, and New Pal. That'll roll through Hancock County as well. You can see here, just showing a few tenths of an inch of snow, but just be careful because in the morning, when we so quickly drop these temperatures below freezing, uh, the wind will try to dry things out, but that won't be totally successful. So be especially careful. Bridges, overpasses, your own deck, for example, if you walk out of the house, anything where the air gets under the structure will be more slippery. 28 and falling tomorrow, only 20 on Christmas Day, but then we turn it around quickly. Mostly sunny and 39 on Saturday. There's your strong, cold west wind through the day tomorrow, 10 to 20 miles per hour. These are temperatures early afternoon. They'll fall from there and land here in the single digits on Christmas morning. It's just a matter of calming the wind and getting breaks in the cloud cover as to how cold we get. But that is a very cold way to start your Christmas morning and it sets the tone for the day. 20 will be the high on Christmas. We're dry as we get to Saturday, mostly sunny, 39, all the way back up to 45 with a 30% chance of rain as we get to Sunday, maybe some snow showers on Monday. There it is, an improving forecast, at least it gets warmer. Right, and we'll take that. Thank you, Kevin. Some schools and even teachers have faced backlash over virtual instruction, but when it comes to remote learning, educators seem to dislike it more than parents. That's according to a survey by Rand Corporation, a nonprofit research organization. That survey found that more parents prefer in-person instruction, but some say remote learning has been working for them. When it comes to teachers, about two-thirds said students were not prepared for grade-level work because of distance learning. They also said students who were fully remote were not completing as many assignments and were absent more often. Teachers also reported high levels of stress and burnout. Despite all of that, superintendents said in a separate study that they would like to keep virtual schooling as an option after the pandemic. The reasons that the superintendent said that they had wanted to keep online schools after the pandemic really related to parental demand. So they cited reasons like retaining enrollments, uh, student enrollments in their district, Enrollments is the way that districts get funding and also the benefits of offering just more choices to students and parents. As many experts predicted and warned, the survey also found that lower income students are suffering the most during this time. You can find stories about how Indiana educators, lawmakers and parents are navigating remote learning and find resources for students in the Rebound Indiana section of our website at WRTV.com. Barely four months 
had passed since the end of the Pacers last season, but time to finally get this one going at home. No fans inside Bankers Life Fieldhouse, but the Pacers were able to have some good energy at the start. In particular, DeMontis Sabonis. He had a big first half, leading the Pacers with 20 points scored before the break. Remember, he missed all of the games in the Orlando bubble this summer with an injury. Been more than nine months since he played. Pacers had 35 on the board in the first quarter. Malcolm Brogdon had 21 in the game, three in the second, but the Pacers trailed at the halftime break. Victor Oladipo put together a big third quarter to spark the Pacers' comeback. Vic had 11 in that frame, finished the game with 22, 9 of 14 shooting from the field. Oladipo also moving the ball around, finds Justin Holiday on the move. Pacers went from down six to up six, 27-16 the advantage in the third. They continued to pour it on in the fourth. Sabonis finishes the night with 32 points, best of his career, 11 of 18 shooting from the field. He also had 13 rebounds and five assists, looking every bit like the all-star he was last season. Pacers open with a 121-107 win. It was exciting, you know, I was really excited. I couldn't even really take my pregame nap. Just thinking about it, um, just want to go out there, you know, I'm sad the fans weren't there. It would have been a lot more more fun, more crazy. Our fans are amazing and um, just can't wait for the next one now. i got to keep going. I thought defensively we were much more active on the second half and then and then to your point it created uh, much more offensive opportunities for us so as you know those things go hand in hand a good offense is good defense and, and vice versa the pacers play in chicago on saturday six out of the next seven games after that will be here at home a pair of those against boston coming up on sunday and tuesday butler with its first big east home game of the season providence making the trip into hinkle bu's freshman came up big in this one chuck harris got the start as aaron thompson is still out with an injury. Three of Harris's 10 points had Butler up eight midway through the second half. Jacoby Coles came off the bench and led the Butler scoring with 14 points. The Dogs with a steady effort start to finish. A 70-64 win pulls them even at one and one in the conference. If we stick to our principles and what we know um, as far as practice, then, you know, it'll translate to the game. But it's definitely been, you know, kind of tough. You know, we haven't had a lot of practices, you know, long practices coming out of the COVID situation. But you know, we got talented guys and smart guys who uh, who work hard and know how to play the game. So, you know, coaches have, the coaches are confident in us to be able to execute in the game. Same two teams will play next Wednesday in Providence. Indiana's Big Ten opener at home against Northwestern. The Hoosiers were down 15 in the first half, 9 at halftime. An 8-0 run opened the second. Trace Jackson Davis giving Indiana a surge. He led the scoring with 22 points, also had 9 rebounds. Hoosiers take the lead a few minutes later. Armand Franklin's three broke a 47-all tie. Franklin scored 16. But the visiting Wildcats put together a 12-0 run that ultimately made the difference. Chase Audige was good the entire half. All 17 of his points came after the break. Hoosiers go down 74-67. Northwestern snaps the five-game losing streak in Bloomington. Indiana plays at Illinois on Saturday. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Businesses across Indiana continue to face unbelievable obstacles as they try to survive the pandemic. Despite that, many are staying afloat and even finding success. Join us as we show how some of those businesses have changed and adjusted in 2020. Watch our special report, Inside the COVID Crisis, We're Open, at 6 p.m. tomorrow, right here on WRTV. Kevin. And mark the leading edge of the rain just from Anderson to around Greenfield, just west of Shelbyville, and then between Nashville and uh, Columbus. That will continue to move east. There's other rain behind that. And it leads to this. Temperatures in the 20s in the morning. Watch for slick spots. We'll be in the lower 20s tomorrow evening. The change has arrived. And you can get the latest also by watching GMI when that returns. Have a good night.